Welcome back to Super Sentai Review, episode number 46. This one I'm viewing episodes 13 to 15 of Denzaman. These episodes are, well, the first one usually has an actual purpose. It's actually pretty good at character episode for a one-shot character. The other two, there's really no reason for what happens to these ones. Now, here's something kind of weird about these episodes that is have an unofficial plot thread. No appearance by of how these monsters are hatched. Nope. The monster machine that, that it shows up in the previous two episodes, completely absent. No explained reason why. I'm not really sure. Maybe they're going through the same tread they went through in Bad Fever J, where the villains barely make an appearance in this thing. Seems like, anyways. First, focus on a little girl. Where she spots sissies and balloons. And these other kids basically take balloons away from her. And then we see what looks like to be that this guy claims to be a balloon salesman. Which, yes, that is an actual thing. A guy can sell balloons. There's nothing really wrong with that at all. This guy actually. Sometimes, basically, the balloon people who sell balloons are a bit suspicious. It's not, it's not exactly a job you actually find here in the U.S. Normally, that's a job for clowns, per se. Or the fact that you might see these type of people at, let's say, like a fair. Or, like, some kind of event involving children. But otherwise, though, there's not, like, door... There's not, like, town-to-town -town balloon salesmen here that I can think of. I've never come across one I, I, I know of. But the weird thing is, when it comes to balloons, at certain points, basically, the balloon, you, when you let go of the balloon, it will go up and up. And yes, I have seen this. Where a fully blunt balloon, like, if, if you don't have your hand on a thing, or... Sometimes, basically, they do this, where they take the string for a balloon and they tie around a child's wrist, just so they won't lose it. After a while, basically, of being like up in the air, thing will deflate. But if you let go of it, they will go up in the atmosphere and you will never see it ever again. That's simply put how these things work. But these balloons don't contain helium. They contain some kind of gas. And also, for some reason, this balloon salesman just, just has these balloons pop out of his mouth for some reason. Now, in his human form, there's really no reason for this at all. Not really, no. <sighs> okay. Um... That's essential to some noise. Now, in the case of the guy who plays the balloon man, this is something quite unique about him. The guy who plays him, the guy who does the human form, well, he's he just basically a one shot character, but the voice actor, well, this is the guy whose voice is St. Egos. Yeah, and here's something quite weird about this. How would I say it's weird? I know that's a recurring thing for me to say weird. The monster form barely appears in this episode. You see it on screen for a time. You might see it for like a minute or two and it goes back to human form. Not sure exactly what was the reason for that. I thought that was kind of weird. So, after saving the little girl, it was like, oh... You want to go see your father's? Like, sure. Oh yeah, and apparently this this mysterious balloon salesman knows who this little girl is and who her father is. Now, that is, in my opinion, that makes him very suspicious. Because this guy might be a, a molester, or he is very, uh, almost like a serial killer. Yeah, not very trustworthy. So she takes him. To, he takes her to Tokyo, and apparently has some fun, which is kind of. And she calls him Gramps. Yes, yeah, seriously, the guy in his team form is known as Gramps. Why the heck is he with this? I have no idea. And apparently, when she her father, she's he's actually quite surprised to see her, though she she had ran into a couple of Denzi Rangers, uh, two people she actually does know.
Mika, I believe her name is. Yes. Yeah, and the weird thing is, when it comes to Super Sentai, the actor plays her father, Dr. Rajima. He pretty much, in a way... How should I put this? The guy, this was his last Super Sentai credit appearance. He never appeared in Super Sentai after this. No, not really. Usually he appears in, like, in, like, one-shot roles, per se. And that was it. Mm -hmm. So the, the the scientist, what exactly is he inventing per se? A special device that will get rid of pollution, which that sounds like a pretty smart thing. And of course, the Bader clan want to get rid of it because they want to pollute the earth. That's the reason for it. I'm like, okay, at least there's a reason for it. You're two times, basically, there's no reason for it. So, I know I'm losing my train of thought here, but just trying to think, okay? So, they arrive in Tokyo, and, of course, he tries to he damage the machine, but later on gets fixed, no problem. And eventually, after a girl feels that he li she likes him, probably as a friend, he just puts her down. As they're holding her hostage for a while, then of course he, then of course the Rangers eventually destroy him. Yes, it's a good character piece for a one-shot character, like I said, but it's not a very noteworthy episode. Episode fourteen is quite unique, in that it's the first time they actually have a giant monster fight and no Megazord. First time since episode four. They've had monsters show up, but ever since they introduced the whole thing of growing monsters, this is the first time since the introduction of the, of the Megazord that they've not done a, a giant monster fight. Now this one is simply, okay, these kids get 100 points just from playing and doing nothing. Now the plan for the Vader clan is to be really, is to make these children lazy. Now, I'm thinking, though, like, this sounds very familiar. This sounds like a retread from Bad Fever J. I'm sure it probably is. They pretty much just took a plot thread from Bad Fever J and put it here because the show likes using kids so much. So, why the heck not? Oh, by the way, in episode 13, Chinico, the old friend of Denzel Green, she briefly appears in episode 13. I don't think she appears in 14. She is appearing 15 for a few scenes. Like she does make an impact, partially an impact on the plot of the episode. And the actual monster of episode 15, 14 is a pencil monster. Yes, another time we actually have a study monster. I'm like, though this guy doesn't like studying, but involves studying. I'm like... Yeah, this is probably the type of monster that kids probably don't like seeing very much. The Fu Monster, I thought he was kind of fun. But this guy, like, okay, he apparently makes pencils out of his shoulder for some reason. Well, it's his power. General Heather, I should point out, though, in the previous episode, episode 13, you actually walk in the actual ground. Well, kind of, anyways. He's mostly seen walking into the barn, but yeah, he's seen walking on the ground for the first time because it's almost like they don't want the guy to walk on the ground for for some reason. I don't know why. So, he also disguised himself in his typical suit thing, which actually is the first time he's done this since the whole thing with the painter thing. They're one of the 100 point schools, and it turns out the reason these kids are getting 100% of their test is because they use Vader power. With their, with their electronic, with, with the special pencils, which move by themselves, answer all the questions for them, and I agree with the way the Sentai, with, with the, the, the Denzi Rangers, that that is cheating. So I take tests again, and surprisingly, none of them score hundred percent. But the girl of the group, she actually got the highest score at seventy percent. That's not bad for a test. It's not failing it well for a test anyways. It's not exactly all that terrible. I mean, if you would grade it, that's more like, from a U.S. perspective, that's more like a C. 
which actually is not that bad. Well, in the case of the guy who got 100% of the start, he got a zero, which means that's a big F. Everyone's basically got like a D, per se, but in the case of the girl, she got like a 70, which is not bad for a test. It's not terrible, but... So eventually they do, they do feed the monster and then goes off, but the, I, I think this whole episode 14 is mostly like a PSA for kids in school. That's my personal guess in the case of that one. 15 is the whole thing involving a radio. You're thinking, a radio? The Sentai villains ever explored using radio as a plot device? Yeah, this actually is the first time I could think of. They actually use a radio. Now, I think starts off with Denzel Green meeting with his old colleague. Where she talks about, she'll meet with him, and of course she will talk about how over rollerblading. Which is actually the theme for this episode. Rollerblading a lot. Because we're coming up the heels of the 70s, so... Rollerblading was still popular back then. She asked him, she, he's a Denzel man. By the end of the episode, she kind of confirms. She, she has more suspicion that I think she does kind of think, she does kind of in a way prove in her head that, well, her old colleague has Denzel man, Denzel Green. It was the debut of her new colleague, her partner in the series, Tomiko. Yep, Tomiko, that's her name. Where... She pretty much also, like Chico, appears pretty much throughout the rest. She appears up until episode 49. Mm hmm. What Chico Sarah, who's a bit of a ditz, she, she appears in, like, since episode 12. At least she appears up until the finale. Mm hmm. So this one mostly was like, okay, let's use. A radio to brainwash people to commit to do terrible things. Like, I think this is supposed to be Denzi Yellow, I think. Yeah, it's kind of weird how they basically. Like, it just ran this guy completely at random. Mm hmm. Because he attacks him, and then, of course, takes off his helmet, and he's like, why are you attacking me for? What's going on? And it turns out they want, and, of course, you have the monster up, and it's a monster that's never seen a human form for, so it's called a Pensarella. Yeah, this one's quite interesting, because no human form for this monster, which is strange. Which probably makes it in the first one since the first monster do not have a human form. Now, there's no real reason for the plot of this episode, per se. And there's no reason for them to do this. Like, oh, let's just brainwash some teenagers to kill people. For reasons. Eventually, they do find the actual van that is making these pirated transmissions. And they and they wreck it. Not good explosions in the episode, which is quite in, quite cool. And well, they do eventually the monster eventually, but not really like a lot you can say happens in a lot of these episodes. I mean, the best way to describe it. I mean, in the case of fifteen, it's a little bit better when it comes to basically having some one of the supporting characters, what one of the recurring characters do something in the series, like appearing for a few episodes, like start investigating stuff. But the whole pirate pencil thing, I thought that was kind of dumb. 14 was a bit unnecessary of an episode, though it's a good key episode because there's no monster, there's no giant mech in this one. Excuse me. And, of course, four, 13 is probably the best episode of batch. Of this little three episodes. Yeah, 13 is the best one. Well, in the case, 14, 15, they're just Okay. Not terrible per se, but but fifteen feels like there's no reason for the plot. It's like, oh, let's just 
do this for some reason. It's like they have no real reason to brainwash people. By the way, not the first time they actually did this because Bad J also had a brainwashing plot episode. So we have two episodes in a row involving brainwashing. Hmm. Yeah, so that's it for six of you. Stay tuned for next week, which will be Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Okay, see you next video. Bye.